Good morning, everyone. Uh, Adam Smith with Just the Tips Coaching, and with me, as always, is my marketing director, Jen Weibower. Uh Good morning, Jen. Nice to see you after a single day off. Um, <laughs> for those of you that uh, are unaware, uh, Just the Tips Coaching does an annual mastermind event called the Mile High Mastermind, and that took place this past weekend. So uh, I know Jen is probably still exhausted and recovering and reeling from planning an event for 50 people from all over the country here in Denver with um, both educational and social activities and two full days of planning. So Jen, thank you again for all your hard work on that event. But we've got a treat for you guys today. Our, our guest is a real estate agent uh, here in Colorado. Uh, his name is Joel Nath. Good morning, Joel. Morning. Um, and Jen, maybe we should just make it a habit of only having guests with British accents. Um, we we had Ben we had Ben Lavender on the show. That was a whole lot of fun. And Joel, you actually are from England. Is that correct? Born and raised. The first eighteen years of my life, actually. The first eighteen yeah. years. And then uh, tell us. And I, I certainly want to get into your background and where you came from and how you got into uh, the real estate business. That's one of the big first pieces of our segment. Um, but you also served in the U.S. military. Is that correct? Yeah, well, thing, I ended up over here, like I said, when I was actually 19, I came here, and the uh, United States Army was the only thing I wanted to do at the time. Very cool. And how did that, so when, when you came to the States, where did you come to? So, oh, God, that's, a, that's another, like, long story. Oh, I, mean, I ended up over here, like I said, when I was actually 19, uh, originally Maryland, of all places, Maryland. Okay. Um, so, Baltimore, I assume, was the destination. No, my wife was the only destination. Um, I met her online, and after <laughs> ridiculous, right? Um, so that was me, Anna. So just Anna. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, how does your military career translate from Maryland to Colorado, of all places? Sheer luck. Um, sheer luck. <laughs> True story. Okay. Um, Colorado is my favorite place to be ever. I'm glad I stayed in Colorado and Carson. Um, got stationed here in twenty. 13, I think it was, and you know, after my first appointment and my first enlistment, real estate kind of just happened. Um, but Fort Carson is amazing, loved it, and uh, like I said, couldn't, couldn't imagine living anywhere else right now. So. so, how long have you been in Colorado? Um, coming on six, six and a half years. Okay, and tell us, um, you know, how did the um, transformation occur from Fort Carson to the real estate business? Again, I think I could uh, blame my wife on that one. So when I was active duty, um, after my first appointment, we started flipping homes. Uh, back when that was a possible thing in Colorado with a couple hundred thousand. Um, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we do. So, so I, I, I absolutely loved it. And um, being an infantryman, we had no tangible life skills after being an infantryman. So my wife, out of the blue, just said, hey, just, just try being a realtor. And... Super luckily landed on my feet from, uh, from the get go. I had a smooth transition and nothing too crazy. So, well, this, yeah. tell us about that. How did you get started? How did you decide that yeah. that was a good idea? Where were you? Where, what was your fir- what was your first landing spot in the real estate world? I don't even say still to this day. Good idea. It's, it's been a brilliant idea, but a lucky idea for me. Um, it, brilliant timing. So um, I got out of the military in August, and I was right at the time I was finishing up one of my blitz. So I went from no license to having a listing within about um, three months from starting education to getting my license to getting out. But obviously it was my own. Um, and I had a killer open house the first time, went straight on the contract, pulled buys out of that. And then luckily because of this, actually I, I do give credit to my military experience because um, the VA loan just came out of nowhere with these guys. I, I that with them, I was doing about four different closings. So from nothing to five or six closings within a couple of months. Um, luckily, kept that up, kept that ball rolling. That, that's amazing. Um, and for our audience, which again is mostly real estate agents and mortgage originators, people in the sales industries for sure, um, I, I think they would be reeling in knowing that 
within a few months' time, you had a half a dozen deals under your belt. We know agents that have gone a year or two without a half a dozen deals under their belt. So that's really a big deal. Um, and tell us how those deals came about. Where did you find them? Where did they come from? What were the lead sources? So, you know, at that time, I just joined a team. I was kind of floating around. I had no idea really what it was. I came into this business with the impression that, because that's what I did, people walked into a real estate office and said, give me a real estate agent. That's what we do back home. Um, and lo and behold, I was so, so bloody wrong. Um, so I learned very quickly that I wanted to be relational rather than transactional as far as how I conduct my business and talk to people. And even when I didn't know what the hell I was talking about, I presented myself in a manner that kind of came off like I knew what I was talking about. So English accent definitely helped. Um, you can fake it, fake it if you want, but <laughs> um, everything came from just having a genuine conversation, making sure it was the right move for these people at the time, and then basically getting out there and hitting the ground seven days a week, every single hour. So it was a lot, but um, all of them are military. Every single, my first year, I only did VA loans. I was entirely by having accept my own houses. Well, th we describe a lot of activity in lead generation for real estate agents through our coaching program about running with your tribe. If you're a vegan, hang out with the vegans. If you're into CrossFit, hang out at the CrossFit gym. These are the people that you have a connection with, you're building relationships on. This is a great type of activity to generate leads, which we all know lead to relationships, friends, clients, closings. So being straight off the base, this probably was your tribe. Yeah, I couldn't, I honestly I could not agree more with that. Um, oh, you say tribe, I say relational, uh, it's the same thing, but I found my, my niche when I first got out, and that was military. Um, I knew how to talk to these people on a sincere level, and I just built that uh, relationship and that confidence with them. And what, even though I was brand new, all of them started turning into referrals and repeat business. So, you know, I'm still selling houses from the people I originally sold to um, all, all those years back now. Uh, we expected that that was the case. Obviously, um, Jen and I do some vetting to see who's going to be on the show. We know what your production looks like. And obviously, if you were months in with a half a dozen deals under your belt, you've got a solid handle from that point going forward about how important repeat and referral business is. Um, and the mortgage company that uh, we have as well is m the majority of it is repeat clients and client referrals. Um, so... Yeah, we're certainly very, very uh, in tune with how that works. So in those early days, so you've got a half a dozen deals under your belt. You're, I assume, spending a good chunk of your time furthering those relationships, making sure that those people know we're never going to use anybody for real estate again other than Joel. And if anybody asks us about real estate, we're going to say Joel. Yeah, absolutely. So, so like I said, I started on a team. Um, I love that team. I, I do feel like I have a lot of my success at that because they taught me how to essentially lead, generate, and maintain those uh, relationships, schedule time into my day to only talk to people I've um, worked with and then build on those relationships. So it wasn't just going out to grab a beer with them or going out you know, for coffee on the uh, people who didn't drink in the military, the one in a million. Um, <laughs> but, uh, all the time it was making sure I had touches with them. Um, each year, I like a bare minimum six. Every single time, it wasn't just me coming to them say, saying, hey, it was me coming to them um, as a friend, then with a little bit of real estate. Hey, I'm still a realtor. Who do you know is looking to buy, sell, or invest? So I did ask those questions, still do. Um, and even like I said, to this day, just got a text from a guy I haven't spoke to for four months, but sold his house five years, four years ago now, uh, saying he's looking to sell and um, he's going to use us again. So Absolutely. All right, so, but we all know, well, we meaning you and Jen and I and those people that are in our inner circles, um, know that a half a dozen deals in your first few months under your belt and nurturing and furthering those referral repeat relationships hasn't brought you, by itself anyway, to the level that you're at now. So there's got to be some lead generation that was going on outside of that stuff early in your career. What did that look like? Yeah, um, so early in my career too, I, I was focusing not just on the relation, there, there was some other summons of lead gen. Um, I got my first master's degree in business. 
um, that massively help me run this as a damn business as opposed to kind of pinging around the block doing it whatever I want, whenever I want, as most realtors kind of do sometimes. So it got to a point where I started focusing on what I thought the future of real estate would be, and that's, I believe, very heavily social media based. So I grew for myself, I started a team, had a team and I started bringing in people who could help leverage their time, my time, and then social media based marketing as opposed to what I see a lot of traditional agents that do. So I have very heavy lead source coming from online leads. At the time. Yeah. Okay. Um, I well, maybe I'm wrong, but I suspect you've shifted away from that over the years of your career. I, I personally have, um, but I do still have the for my team. I have those leads coming in. But what I what I do believe is that people do come to social media to look at us as real estate agents. And I try and be as genuine as possible on my personal and my um, business page, and kind of differentiate my team and myself uh, because of that. You know, I love when people call me who I've never spoken to say, Hey, I love what you do, and I, I have no idea who they are. <laughs> you know? uh, likewise, and we certainly get a lot of that, although we get a lot of that because of activity like this. Uh, yeah. Our video blog, our live show, um, obviously a lot of people know yeah. us, they do, they watch us every week, they see uh, how we speak, tone, and inflection, they know what my home office looks like, they know what Jen's office looks like. Uh, they know our sense of humor as twisted as it may be. Um, so yeah, I get it. It's a really good tractional type of activity that way. Um, so where did the shift occur from you being a new real estate agent to having a team? How did that come to pass? That, that was, uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, it was always my big picture to, to be able to kind of control because I do believe every firm, everything has its own like culture and subsets of the culture. What I wanted to build were agents who were self-sustained, um, but happy where they were. You know, felt value, felt like they were getting paid the right amount. And I came from a place where I didn't necessarily feel that. So it came from me being stubborn, having my background in business, um, as far as education is concerned, um, to, to really trying to build something that I hadn't yet been built in the brokerage I am in. Um, and luckily, I said luckily, I've maintained, I've never had an agent for me, love them with this, and they all do very well on their own. So now, thank God, I've got a top producing team in this firm um, because of the way that I wanted to build it, because it hadn't been done yet. So it really came from being in a place where I, I didn't maybe necessarily feel valued as perhaps I should have been doing the production I was doing, um, to be like, okay, let me try this, let me see what I can do, and basically watch me do it. <laughs> Yep, that was the uh, high D personality trying to do something. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and what does your team look like? How many, how many agents, how many, how many support people? Uh, tell us what yeah. that team structure looks like. So my team structure is actually pretty pretty usual. I don't, a lot of people have, I believe, a few too many admins for the kind of size that I have. So it's me, and then I have four agents. Uh, one of them acts as a TC slash EA, um, who happens to be my wife, so thank God. Um, she's really good. <laughs> uh, and I, I love it. Basically, I do have um, requirements for them as far as production goes, but my entire like, role as far as having a team standard is I'm going to help you focus on what your niche is. For instance, I was never a good cold caller, partly because people didn't understand me on the phone, partly because it just didn't bring me any semblance of happiness. So I, I make sure that I focus on my team's strengths. So one of my agents is the only person I know who's still doing it successfully. The other one's entirely relational and drives direct cars five days a week too, um, but absolutely crushes it. And then my wife's just focusing in, just getting into it. I'm trying to hand off some of, I work with all of attorneys, trying to hand some of that business off to her, um, because I, I believe they're the kind of deals that really test you as an agent. So my structure is about finding people's ne uh, niche and then focusing on that and building it. And then all of my, every single system I have is already set up and ready to roll. So as far as needing like a full-time admin, I think we can have a look between my wife and my entire I don't see the need for anything more because the system is pretty straightforward. The timing of this is fantastic. Part of this uh, mastermind event that we did this weekend included a lot of how to build a team and how that should look and uh, how to attract the right people and how to make sure that uh, their niche is being filled, that they're being satisfied, those kinds of things. Um, so where did it start? Did it actually start with your wife or was there another agent that was your first edition? Yeah, she was actually, my wife was actually my, my second to last hire. 
realistically. Um, that, again, I did have the plan. I did have this big thing. I wanted to get through licensing, so I could. I saw her potential as a realtor. But it started with um, Brittany Welch, who came from another team, and she she is known down here in the real estate world as kind of like the queen of flipping. Because she, you ask her to find a flip, and two days later, somewhere in one of her farms, is someone who will have like five people saying, "Yeah, can we bring me cash off?" Sure. Uh, we we know who Brittany is. No question. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> Um, she is an absolute hustler, love her to bits, and um, she was my first hire. And we had that discussion pretty early on when I, when I went to, a new, uh, to start the team about whether or not it would be a right fit. And bottom line is it's been brilliant for both of us. And hopefully, you know, if she's uh, watching this, hopefully she's happy as, uh, as she said she is. And how long ago was that? About a year and a half now. I don't know, God, more. Uh, last, last February. So started off with me and her. Um, and it worked out. And then I, I said, like, hey, look, we have something that makes sense here. You know that I should know um, to, to hire. Because I've been through a bunch of agents that have come to me saying, hey, I want to be in the team. I hear what it's like. And I hear what you do. Um, but I couldn't quite find that, that perfect fit. So unbelievably, Brittany for me, talked to this kid, Eric Council, who I have just so many high hopes for. Because you know, if anyone's a good person, it's him. Um, and I interviewed him in about four interviews later with the kid, and my interviews consist of going to Applebee's, grabbing a beer. You know, we, we had a real talk, not a, this is what I can provide you, it's what can we provide each other. Um, and then finally, he went so early from a team he was on, then he said, okay, let's, let's do this, jump in. And from coming to my team, he, he put two on the contract, you know, first week, and he, he hasn't slowed down either. Like, super proud of him. Yeah. And where do you fit into it right now? What what aspect of it do you enjoy the most? What activities are you making sure you're setting aside for Joel to always be able to participate in? Yeah. I mean, is the, is the big picture for you eventually to just sit up high on your throne and watch your creation? Or uh, do you want to maintain some kind of... Is there Are there activities in the entire process from lead agenda closing to audit that you would enjoy, want to continue to do, where would you insert yourself in A to Z in your real estate business? Yeah, that's, a, that's a, another big big picture question. So my my vision for this was I want every single agent on my team, and that, that would account anyone that came on, to be able to handle everything in a real estate transaction. I don't, so I know some teams kind of Get, to, uh, get someone with contracts step out until closing. I want my team to fully handle it the entire way through. So I'm trying to build a way in which they don't need me uh, for any of the transaction stuff. What they need me for um, is to iron out those bizarre real estate problems that you get out of the blue, which can be anything. My experience with the attackers. I've got, I feel like I've seen pretty much everything now. Always wrong because every new deal comes up right. Um, <laughs> you know? I feel like they use me because I do see things fairly differently, and that's again the whole character profile. Um, so really, I want to maintain the culture I have, I maintain the kind of forward thinking movement all my agents have, I believe they have any, um, without having anyone stack me at time. So I'd love to step out of business, but I feel like if I were to, we might lose some of the culture of my team, and I want to be able to maintain that throughout. Okay. Uh, I do believe culture is by far the biggest thing that I want for a team. Um, and we have a kind of weird, <laughs> weird thing going on. I love them, but we're a little weird. <laughs> I, I would hope so because you need to embrace it. Um, the, whatever, for those of you that are watching, whatever your unique value proposition is, whether it's how you operate as a real estate agent or as a loan originator, an insurance agent, or as a business owner, those things need to be embraced. It's going to, it needs to be embraced and projected. It's how you're going to attract people that you want to work with, whether they're colleagues or clients. And it's actually going to help you repel the people that you don't want to work with that shouldn't be in your office, that shouldn't be in your client list, that shouldn't be ones referring more people like themselves because you didn't like the original one in the first place. So really, that what Joel's getting at here, I hope, and correct me if I'm wrong, Joel, is that having that oddity, uh, that uh, uniqueness, is something that's actually going to help you further your culture, 
further the relationships with the people you work with, further the relationships with your clients, and make sure that you're really building something that doesn't provide you any additional stress or pain or drama outside of what our industries already provide. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And if our kind of concept is while we understand we are salespeople, we don't want to be a salesperson. No, none of us trust really like a typical realtor. We'll say we don't do, do the typical realtor thing, but we all focus on what makes us different, what differentiates differentiates us from the competition, whether that be driving drift cars or door knocking yoga pants because Ricky does every damn day, or me being me. Um, we want to focus on what makes us different so that we are always top of mind for whoever we talk to. Um, that's been a big point, is just be ourselves uh, through the whole of the business. And while we do, I have my team running script practice right now, while we do scripts pretty much four, four or five times a week, um, we only do that to, to refine how we talk to people, not to change it. Yeah. Okay. And Joel, what do you see going forward, certainly for your operation? Um, is there more intended growth? Um, what do you think your you and your team's lead generation is going to look like in 2020, 2021? What, what do you see uh, as best as you can? My crystal ball is in the shop. I don't know where yours is. But um, for what you foresee for the next couple of few years... What does business look like? Well, what does business and lead generation look like for Joel Nath and his team? Yeah, so, so kind of as you know, like all of my agents are at different stages of their life cycle as a realtor. So this, this week I've already started two days where we're going to have a team meet, team mastermind, I should say, as to how we want to pursue first fiscal, you know, first quarter in 2020 as well as the remaining year. Um, and basically what we came up with last time, we had this kind of get together last week was um, we want to focus on more client appreciation events, more ways to have, have kind of grand recognition between us now that we are a really cohesive team, um, as opposed to relying on online resources like some other people may. So again, we just want to focus on being relational being tra- uh, as opposed to being transactional. Because I find that retaining a client or having repeat business is significantly cheaper and better than ever having paid for Oh, so, much easier. And they already uh, know you, they like you, they've worked with you. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head with that. Yeah, so um, long story short, all we're doing for this next fiscal year is planning out and you know, planning out how to maintain and then retain. Um, that's it. That's what we want to do. We want to be relational. So, okay. Do you think there will be additional people on your team over the course of next year? As far as growth goes, um, yes. Yeah, it's entirely possible. We, we've discussed it again. The, our biggest concept for us um, is to maintain that culture. But, you know, Brittany's in a place where she could have her own team, and she has been for a while if she wanted to. So that's something we've discussed and something we'll continue discussing. But for right now, um, in the next six months, we may take on one more, but that's really it. We've just, just had a brand new agent. Um, she just started with us. And I'm also excited to see where she goes, and um, within the next few months, I'll know if she's going to be a good fit. Okay. So, now, when you say that, you don't mean brand new to, to uh, brand you. You mean brand new to the industry. Brand new, brand new. Uh, and actually, so I spoke to her maybe a year ago when she um, came looking for advice on how to get into real estate. Um, she And she's always loved the image that our teams have. So this has been a long time coming. But um, like I've said from the beginning, I'm looking for a character traits. I'm looking for the right person. Because I can, I can train, anyone can train how to become a realtor and how to do it. What I can't train is, you know, just uh, um, who you are as a person. Can't do it. Oh, Joel, did we lose you? I think we lost you. Oh, there you are. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Um, So, and um, I certainly uh, don't want to push the subject. Um, I, I asked because maybe that one person, as you defined it, over the next six months is watching. Um, and maybe after seeing what goes on and knowing that you have an oddball culture and uh, that you've got all manner of agents at different cycles in their career, uh, that maybe there's a good fit for one of you watching that Joel may be your guy. Joel, do you guys only do business in Colorado Springs? We've um, we ventured up north a little ways. We actually build a pretty good um, relationship with a few Denver agents, and that's because your market, while closed, is, is so damn different. That Very. We found the you are past monument. I don't. I don't. I would rather give it to someone who knows what they're doing up in Denver. But 
you know, I'm a member of RGAR, so we do work down in Canyon when needed. And the only reason I ever did that was I've taken bankruptcy cases down there. And it's been easy. Um, it's very easy to sell houses down there. Um, and then we have sold in Pueblo and Pueblo West and blah, blah, blah. But we focus very heavily on the house Valley. And then I've done luxury up in Colorado Springs too. But um, again, when we try and target our clients, they're military, they're um, in the 300 to 400 price range typically. Um, they're people that know us and we understand what they're going through. So we focus on that in the spring. That, that uh, right off the bat for our audience watching, I guarantee you they know full well that uh, your market is very different than ours. Um, and while we're, what, 60 miles away, <laughs> Uh, it is amazing what changes both in uh, real estate and culture and uh, on and on. They are very uh, different animals. We've certainly come to experience that over the years working with real estate agents from both markets and buyers and borrowers from both markets. There's uh, no question that uh, there is some kind of invisible fence right on Monument Hill that none of us can see. <laughs> No question. All right, well, Joel, knowing that that person may be out there watching, maybe now are in syndication, or that there may very well be consumers watching live or in syndication, give us the highlights on what is the best way to reach out to you. If I'm that agent and I think I might be a good fit in those next six months with Joel, or uh, certainly if I'm a consumer, a potential buyer or seller, or Somebody wants to fix and flip properties is a good example. How do I reach out to the Joel Nath team? I'm, uh, I'm literally on my phone 24-7, um, nonstop. And that, that's not just me. My wife's on our Facebook page and everyone on my team will do that. So I, I would advise, I would love to see you guys add um, us as a personal friend as opposed to on a business page. Um, so you can see both sides of the coin because we keep one a little more um, light so you can see what it's like to be us and then business page we kind of stick a little bit more to just throwing in a bit of that with everything you do but definitely add us as friends and give us a chat we're always there perfect and how about website <clears throat> yep. phone number email address give us all the highlights i'll have jen post them in the uh video comments so if people want to reach out to you they can yeah um, so our website is tommarchanting.com. So I, I love it. Uh, we use real geeks and that, that's such a user friendly site. Uh, my email is joel at Team. So it's like everyone else is Ashley or Brittany or Eric at Team. Um, and uh, like I said, personal friends, best way to do it if you want to talk to us. And then we're, I like getting coffee or beers with people that really meet them. And how about a phone number? Uh, my number, I'll get my number out. Yeah, it's 719 331 8698. Cool. All right. So, Joel, I can't thank you enough. It's amazing to me every time that we find a guest that's really in tune with some of the things that we do when it comes to team structure and how to build a repeat and referral business and those kinds of things that the half hour episode just whips on by. And we've actually done it. Um, so just a few things in closing, um, unless Jen, here we have ignored you for another episode. Is there anything you want to uh, insert? Are you uh, coherent after the work we put you through over the last few days? <laughs> no, it's been great though, Joel. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Yeah. All right. And for those of you watching live or in syndication, um, feel free to use the text code scrolling at the bottom of your screen. You can text TIPS to 63566 and it will ping you back all kinds of information about just the TIPS, our coaching program, how to get the episodes of How I Met Your Mortgage, how to get our weekly video blog, uh, how to subscribe to our monthly tip, how to get a copy of my book, Just the Tips, all that content is included in that text code, and Jen tracks that stuff pretty closely, so she'll be able to get you whatever you want. Again, Joel, thank you so much for joining us. Yep, loved it. It's been great. Um, and don't go anywhere. We're going to run our extra and sign off. And I will chat with you in just a moment. Thanks for watching, guys.